Hello, I'm Eben from EZY Switchgear. Today we are going to talk about standard test that any SF6 switchgear must pass. So, we found in the past that a lot of unscrupulous electricians add switchgear into the grid that is not supposed to be there. Therefore, it then after a period of time fails and there's lots of damage that happens to the switchgear itself, which could have been prevented, as well as the network and outages that flows forth from it. The first test that I want to speak about is the high pot or the high voltage test. This is a test that is twice the nominal operating voltage of the switchgear, which means if you have 11 kV switchgear, you want to put it to 22 kV or even higher. We use 25 kV because that's the uh, voltage that we feel is, is safe. And therefore, if each switchgear that pass through that high voltage test, you know will surely work on the network. And then the second one is the speed test. Whenever there is a fault on the system, you want the switchgear to switch as fast as possible, isolating the fault as soon as the protection settings tell it to trip. If the mechanism is old, stuck, not maintained properly, it can take a longer time to trip and therefore put at risk the whole network. The primary injection test is the third test, which is quite important. The primary injection test tests the whole circuit from your CTs all the way to your protection device, your tripping and your mechanism. The primary injection test and the speed test is done in conjunction. The primary injection test ensures that when something happens on the network, your switchgear will trip. The last test is the doctor test. The doctor test ensures that internally in your switchgear, there's no loose connections. So a doctor test will pick up a loose connection quite quickly and make sure that you don't, ha don't have any hot connections in your system. When doing these tests with proper test equipment, you ensure that the unit will not fail in the foreseeable future. Eben from EZY Switchgear.